Hey, welcome back to the show. I'm Dan Shaheen. Today, we're going to talk about Batman. You know, Tom King's been on Batman for a couple of years now. 85 issues. I can't remember the last creative run by a writer on a mainstream book like Batman for 85 issues. To me, uh, that was an achievement all unto itself. But a lot of people had a lot of complaints about Tom King's run. Oh, Batman's too emotional. Batman, it's too pretentious. It's too literary. Well, we've fixed all that. We've got the new run of Batman begins now with issue 86. Let's take a look at it. Let's see what we like and maybe what we don't. And uh, let's talk about it today on Comic Book News. Hey, welcome back. Thanks for watching. Today we're going to talk about Batman number 86, Their Dark Designs Part 1. It's written by James Tinian IV, the fourth. Tony S. Daniels uh, did the pencils. Danny Mickey did the inks. Clayton Cowles did the lettering. And Tomeo Mori did the coloring. And I, I don't usually mention the lettering, but I want to today because there's some stuff I don't like about it. In fact, there's a lot of things I don't like about this book. Now, say what you want about the Tom King run. I thought, I didn't read the entire run. I read the last, maybe half of the run. And it was of varying quality. I did plenty of reviews where I complained about the story uh, and the, the pacing and many different things. One thing I did always like, though, was Tom King's writing and his sort of focus on Batman uh, as this sort of broken figure emotionally. I think it makes sense with with what the character is and how he deals with that uh, was interesting to me. I actually, as much as I did not like the City of Bane storyline, I did in the end like the way it ended with Thomas Wayne, uh, Bruce Wayne's alternate dimension flashpoint father, ultimately having a noble motivation for what he did um, th throughout the series. So like it or hate it, I thought it tried new things for Batman, took him in new uh, directions emotionally, and I don't know, I'm a sucker for that. But So let's talk about uh, Batman 86, the new stuff. I, and, and you know what, why even talk about it when we can gaze upon it in the Million Dollar Comics stand? All right, Million Dollars. Get you a new Batman, 86. You know, Tony S. Daniels, I think, is a good artist. James the IV, I am not convinced, is a great writer. I I'm going to talk a lot about what I didn't like in this series, but l let's just move through it. So, uh, we begin with a little talk about, like, Batman remembering back to his past and how he always liked to draw new designs for the city. He used to, like, draw back... Gotham City and add new towers and add new stories to existing towers and stuff. This is something we never heard about before, but it's really important to this story because this is what we're trying to uh, move Batman in this direction. Batman is a designer. Um, you have a design for Gotham City, Master Bruce. Isn't it time the world saw it? So that's what that's this is what Alfred used to say to him. He, Alfred used to tell him, when you were a kid, you used to draw all these designs, and now here you are, you're Batman. Why do you got to go out to Cape when you've got all this money and resources as Bruce Wayne? Why can't you put those designs into effect to make the city better? Okay, nice artwork by Tony Daniels. Here's why I brought up the lettering by Clayton Cowles. Man, is this a terrible billboard? This is awful. It's hard to. It's a little bit hard to see here in the million dollar comics cam. I'll try to do a million dollar zoom in. Um, it is it, it. Somehow the. It is behind Batman's cape, but like you don't can't see the rain through it. It's just a terrible font choice and just looks awful. Like that's what Bruce Wayne would set up as a billboard. Anyway, it's super important, right? Because it's laying out this plan that well we'll, we'll see what it's laying out. Meanwhile, cut to, oh, random villain gathering, right? And we've got a gathering of four um, assassins brought together by, we don't know who yet, but we'll find out. And these assassins, who we got? Cheshire, 
who uses poison a lot and we've got Merlin who's an archer and we've got ooh two new guys two new villains we're introducing we're already new Batman we're introducing new guys we've got the gunsmith Mr. Gun Guy wrapped literally in the American flag no ham-fisted commentary going on here and who else this other guy Mr. Teeth ooh you can see his teeth okay these are two new characters, and we're destined to learn a little bit more about them, I guess. This is their first appearance, so if you collect first appearance, first appearances of uh, rando villains, Batman 86. Next, we cut to where? Our new Wayne Industries headquarters in the middle of downtown Gotham. They're like, who needed this old building that was here anyway? We just tore it down, and we put up the new Wayne Industries campus. Okay. And they're throwing a gala, but Bruce Wayne is not there. In his stead is his new what? Is Selena Kyle. What is, I mean, there's a relationship now between Batman and Catwoman. It's complicated, right? They're not married, but they don't, they don't have an arrangement. But does that extend to Bruce Wayne and Selena Kyle? Is that now their public life? Like they're a couple, they're a non-married, but together a couple in public? I don't know. I don't have a problem with that, but like, it seems weird, especially because is Selena Kyle in this version, in this universe, is she a convicted felon? And so is nobody putting X, Y, and Z together? I don't know. Anyway, she's talking in Bruce Wayne's stead, but here she is. She's at this gala, right? Speaking for him, but she's just talking about how she can't resist uh, all the jewels she's seeing. She still loves to steal. Deep in her heart, she's a she's Catwoman. Okay. Um. So we've got the new campus that they're talking about and we've got nervous guy he in a couple of shots there cut to Wayne Enterprises campus where now Lucius Fox is sort of going to be the new substitute for Alfred I guess who's not just building stuff not just the CEO of Wayne en Enterprises also building stuff um all of Batman's gadgets right like you'd be at the Batmobile and whatever I always like the idea of that for a character, but now they've taken it. They're taking it now to like a very sci-fi extreme level, right? Where now Lucius Fox has built something in this new Wayne campus that can just build anything. It's just a factory that can automatically, like you can stamp out designs. Anybody who knows anything about manufacturing things knows that it could, it can never and would never be this easy to build a complex thing like they're building here. And we'll talk about what a stupid thing it is. Um, and, you know, he's saying like, oh, you sent me that new vehicle design, Bruce. Uh, we can build it, but it's a little, you know, it's crazy. I thought you would want to start with a car, but you want to start with it, what, whatever it is. This thing that he calls the Night Climber. And we never get much of a good look at it. All he says here is like, will it fly? I don't know. Will it fly? It'll do your... And he, Batman's like, we'll find out. Come have it meet me. It's got... It... You're going to take an untested aerial vehicle for the first time it's made in test flight in a, the middle of populated Gotham City. Sure, that's very smart and, and um, great for a philanthropist who wants to redesign the city. Right? Right. Okay. So, back to Batman who finds out, oh, who the person who brought the other four villains together is none other than Deathstroke the Terminator. Cool, we're going to get a Deathstroke versus Batman battle. Uh, th th there have been plenty of those, I guess. and But, you know, those should be fun. Let's see what a good writer has to do with bringing these characters together. But, you know, this is Techno Batman now. This is Iron Man Batman, it seems. And, like, he's not going to do any of his Batman secretive detective hand-to-hand -hand anything no he's gonna come in with this thing that fires a crazy grappling hook at him and they're saying this is like in slow motion and deathstroke's moving so fast he strikes before the cable's even taut on this grappling hook the hook comes in but somehow it wraps around his waist doesn't make a lot of sense and then he tries to cut it with his sword but it cuts his sword in half and bruce is like just as i planned okay great Okay, and he just literally pulls him through the wall of the building with the grappling hook. So that what? So that they can encounter him hand to hand. And then he shoots out his another new toy, another new weapon he's developed, the shadow caster that casts Batman shadows 
at his villains to confuse them. Okay. And, you know, and then uh, Deathstroke is like, oh, oh, I see you're... The, the cable was, what does he call it? Superheated nano-cutting wire. Smart. I priced it out once. It seemed like overkill. He priced it out so it's an off-the-shelf technology, but Batman is using custom-built stuff. Okay, maybe he would use some off-the-shelf stuff like that. That kind of makes sense. But why didn't it, why wouldn't it have just cut him in half if it's nano-cutting wire? What Like, he wanted to ch- cut his sword? Doesn't make sense, other than... The writer wanted to do some techno stuff. Um, And so this is interesting, though. Uh, You know, Deathstroke's like, look, I heard, you know, all about Overkill, Batman. I've been hearing people talk about you. You let made Bane make a fool of you. They say Batman's got mad that he's unhinged. They say he has a death wish. Figured I wanted to see that with my own eye. You know, this is just the distraction, right? Keeping your eyes off the real score. Batman says, I know. Now shut the F up and fight me doesn't seem like a very Batman thing to say. Weird that Terminator's sort of spilling the beans like that, but we'll get to that. Next, back to back to the campus again, where now the party's still going on, but suddenly we're down in where the server room. And here's Catwoman, and here's the nervous guy, and she's like, oh, I noticed you were being nervous, so I, I followed you and slipped into my cat costume. He's not supposed to make any connection to Selena Kyle and her. Okay, maybe... But, you know, he says, oh, no, I was I was supposed to swap out Bruce Wayne's plans with these plans. But you have you can't let it happen. Don't let it stop. And suddenly something is kicking in. Something disease is kicking in or something. And a voice starts coming out of his his mouth like, oh, cat, somebody Catwoman knows or who knows Catwoman is like, oh, don't you know? Don't you remember it all started with this five assassins coming to town, blah, blah. This may be like an old a reference to something old, or it may just be something we don't really know about yet. I don't know. I'm not sure. But apparently it's someone, so it's probably a classic Batman-type villain. She seems to know what's going on. and they, Bruce Wayne has a design for Gotham City, but so did we. Like, this was some old plan or something. Anyway, cut back to Batman, who has defeated Deathstroke, right? We get completely cut out of the entire battle. So basically, we got completely cheated out of the Jeststroke fight. We see there's some bolts or arrows in him. Is that from Merlin? There's like a bat thing in his eye. Is that in his eye patch? If you're going to hit a guy in the eye, why would you hit him in the eye patch eye? Not in the regular eye. Oh, because then Deathstroke would be completely blind. But he has healing powers anyway, so it's not like it would be crippling, right? So... Can you tell I'm not a super fan of this? I wish I was. Finally, oh, Batman, when he's calling back to Lucius, he accidentally says Alfred. And he's like, oh, I forgot. Yeah, blah. Okay. All right. That's kind of a neat moment. That's okay. And finally, though, he says, you know what? Uh, 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 that thing, we haven't tested the, that the Night Climber can fly, but Batman's like, oh, it'll fly because it has to fly. And so they get in. We still never get a real look at this thing to know what it's supposed to look like. Are they trying to keep it a secret because it's so cool or whatever? I don't know. It doesn't... I don't know why we wouldn't see it. Here's the closest thing we get to looking at it. It's kind of like an ATST looking thing a little bit. But is it going to fly? It doesn't look like it could fly to me. But suddenly Batman gives an inspiring speech about Alf- Alfred thinking about doing things and... Finally, he believes. He believes it can fly, so it flies. That This does not look anything like that other thing. I didn't like this. Finally, we get to an epilogue. We had one of these in the previous issue, in the last Tom King issue. We had an epilogue written by Tinian with these Joker guys where it is it spelled out that Joker basically knows Batman's secret identity and has known for a long time, but is keeping it for a master plan. Anyway, now, here's all those henchmen. They're all getting tied up with these other henchmen who are like, oh, let's wait till that new bat plane thing is out of range, which, by the way, was just invented. This is the first time it's ever been seen or ever flown, but they're calling it the new bat plane thing. Okay. And they basically, all Joker's henchmen, look, they're all, oh, they're, these guys are killing those henchmen. Oh, boy, I wonder what's coming next. And then these henchmen, are, these guys are like, oh, I wonder why that, oh, and then the last guy kills that henchman. 
and then that henchman calls the Joker, and what do you think happens? But just a variant on, uh, on the whole Joker's kills everybody in the henchman, like from the second Dark Knight movie. I thought that was kind of a lame, kind of ripoff kind of thing, but uh, what are you going to do, guys? New Batman, not impressing me so far. I'll read maybe another issue or so, but I think I'm going to be checking out. Um, I, I think this run is not going to schedule to last that long. I certainly don't like it. I don't like the characterization. I don't like the new direction they're taking this thing. I think Batman is much better when it's back to basics and more realistic and more... I want the technology to be less Iron Man and more Punisher. Uh, I hope Elliot R. Brown is watching this video and maybe would comment on that because I think um, what Batman and maybe even DC Comics needs the most is a little more dose of like reality and a little less like everything's magical super tech. What are you going to do? Um, anyway, hey, thanks for watching this video. I really appreciate it. I know I don't like to get too negative on, on stuff, but um, i got to hold comics to a critical standard, right? And, and I, I've got a high bar for that. So I'm going to continue to tell it like I see it. And uh, speaking of which, you guys, I want to thank you for telling it like you see it in the comments below. I want to hear what you think about it. Batman, either the old run or the new run. I know, I don't know many people who love the old Tom King stuff. Let me know what you think of this issue, if you've read it, or uh, where you think Batman should go in the future. Anyway, thank you for, if you haven't already, click the subscribe button, subscribe for new videos, hit that bell, and decide whether you want to get notifications when I drop new videos, and I try to drop two, three a week. I don't know, that's going to be my goal for 2020. I'm going to strive for uh, higher quality content, maybe less videos, but slightly longer and of better quality. If you got any feedback on that, let me know too. Thank you for your comments and your feedback always. That's what makes this channel better and better. But most of all, hey, just thanks for watching.